Alright. We're going into... <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone in the chat's so chatty. <laughs> We're going into game number two between our Protoss and Zerg combatants here. We're on the beach this time. Everyone got your everyone got your sunscreen? Got your umbrella? What do you type in chat what you bring to the beach? And if it's in Kill the Beach, don't say a syringe. Um, our red Zerg down the bottom right hand side here uh, is Rochan. Is that is that meant to be Rochan or is it meant to be Rochan? As in lol I'm a Zerg and I make roaches. Rochan. Yeah? Uh, am I the only one who thought of that? Um and his, uh, his opponent in the green again is the one who does not care at all. It is everyone's favorite mammal that eats cobras and stuff like that. It is Honey Badger. We'll find out what he's going to uh, wrestle with his uh, with his cobra combatant today here. Uh, obviously in the previous game we saw him uh, just sort of play a very standard sort of style, uh, sort of passive in a way. Of course those Phoenix right at the start were doing a, uh, a good deal of damage but um, uh, but sort of then he sort of sort of sat back with the 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 um, sentries and the immortals and everything and just sort of sat back, capitalized on Rochan sort of moving out to take care of the uh, trying to get trying to get by. Uh, in fact, Honey, Honey Badger actually pointed it out in the uh, in the lobby just before he sort of threw away the army when he went to attack the Natural Expand because he came in too far, got caught by the force fields and lost quite a lot of those forces. So. Uh, that was a little bit unfortunate there for Rochan, and uh, of course we didn't see Infestors till quite... Uh, in fact, wait, did we see Infestors at all? I don't even remember. But, um, what, what's going on with this wall here from Honey Badger? That's not wall at the bottom. I, I actually have no idea what's going on with this wall. Um, anyway, Honey Badger right now, uh, and a... I don't think... does a pylon... I don't think a pylon walls that. He might put the cyber there, and then... Wait, is that... I, I don't know. I, I haven't actually played much Protoss lately. Um, I've been playing a lot of Terran on my second account. But, um... By the way, Rochain gets his natural down. He's also got, uh, of course, a few links out of it, chasing the probe across the map, as we can see. And... Hmm, interesting. Yeah, because he kind of went... He went for that late... Uh, like, went for the gate, of course, and then the, um, and then got the Nexus way after, so I'm a little bit, uh, sort of confused. I think he may have just sort of thought that the spawning pool was a little bit earlier. I, I didn't actually see when the spawning pool went down. I'm pretty sure it wasn't early, though, so, uh, not too much of a problem, but, um, either way, finishes off the wall with a pylon at the bottom. The Cybernetics Core is going to complete the other side. Pretty thick wall, actually. That's not too bad. This just this small spot where the pylon is vulnerable. Then, of course, the walkway here at the side. He's going to send out a probe to try and find out what's going on, see if the Zerg has taken this uh, very easy third base, or if he's just sort of uh, sitting back on the two at the moment. Uh, but uh, looking good. Is Rochan. He's up to 23 drones. He's going to transfer a whole bunch of those across. Let's go into the Rochan cam. Let's see what he's up to. Hang on. There we go. Let's watch the APM. All right. So spreading some creep as we can see. He's going to uh, just have a quick look at with this Ling and see what's going on. Doesn't actually get into that good part of the ramp where you can see what's at the top. But uh, he does take the third base here. Now going to be uh, in a... He actually got attacked by the Zealot that came out. So he's lost this little bit of vision at the front. But luckily for him, he does have this... Uh, whoa. Okay, so he put the... Oh, okay, put the hatchery in the wrong spot, unfortunately for him. But luckily he does have these overlords that are here, which he'll be able to use to scout uh, when the gas is being taken by the Protoss. And also you can use this one across the side to head straight across and see what tech is going on. So... Uh, that's the nice part about being a Zerg. Meanwhile, for Honey Badger, let's see what's going on for him. Was it a 12 pull? Okay, thanks, Ray J. I didn't actually see it at all. Um, but, yeah, 12 pull, kind of weird. I guess that sort of explains why his wall looks a little bit odd. He may have just sort of reacted straight away to build the forge and uh, build everything straight away. Um...
Yeah, getting getting the gate up that quick doesn't. I don't think it actually works as effectively as people think. Um, but I don't know. Either way, uh, plus one weapons on the way. We do have a third and fourth gas. So there's a uh, there is a robo facility. So uh, a little bit interested to see what we'll have here from Honey Badger. We might go for that immortal style bust with a few immortals, some sentries, and some stalkers and a prism. To in fact, he may not even need the prism. He's got this. Uh, this probe that's just gotten out is actually going to be fine to scout out what's going on, put a pylon down if need be. Three gates going up inside the main, the robo is here as well. He should have, did he, uh, he hasn't seen that the second gas is here, but uh, not too much of an issue. Now the sentry coming across, going to try and take care of this overlord. Overlord getting zapped by that flashlight, comes out of the, uh, the snow globe here on the sentry. And now some uh, Lings trying to chase down this Stalker. He's uh, tried a little bit of micro to get rid of some of those Lings, but uh, has taken some hits for his troubles. Gonna head up there into the safety of the cannon, and the Zealot just gonna say, excuse me, coming through. We've now got a couple more gates. Yes, this is definitely a very, very big push coming along here from Honey Badger. He's probably gonna grab a couple more sentries, perhaps. And uh, with all of these gates, it's seven gates with the Robo, he's going to, uh, is he going to get, no, he's not going to get any more upgrades there, he doesn't need them. He's going to sit here on these 39 probes and uh, get prepared for a push. As we said, this probe is already out here at the left-hand side, it's put a pylon down, so he may not even need a prism if he really doesn't, uh, you know, sort of want to go for that. But the extra gates are now up, we've got Immortals being croned out as quickly as he can. Because of course, once those are done, then the roaches can be uh, a very um, sort of minimal threat here. Meanwhile, for Roachan, he's got uh, he's got his three bases up. We got all six gas on the way. He still has uh, not really sort of committed to to the construction of any units just yet, but he does have plus one to melee and uh, carapace on the way for those ground units, along with the roach speed. Interesting combination. So he's gonna he is gonna grab the roaches. I'm not sure if this is a mistake that he got uh, the melee attacks, but um, either way, he's gonna grab all of those. And now it looks as if he should be prepared for this move out here. He's seen all of these units that are on the way, and now with all of these sentries, we've got a whole bunch of sentries. We've got a couple of immortals, and uh, in fact, there is a prism. So he is gonna bring a prism with it. He's got more sentries and stalkers warping in. Should be able to put a couple more pylons down here. Even one just at this spot would be nice if it can get up, but. I don't know if Rochan is going to be prepared for this. He does not have the enough forces to try and uh, contend with all of this. But here we go. Looks as if he's going to catch him at the ramp. Does not really get too much done there. But here we go. Some uh, spine crawlers being built. A force field in. I don't know what's going on with that force field. But beautiful force fields to cover the rest of the army. Honey Badger does not care about your Roach army. Puts the force fields down. Disposes of quite a lot of those. The spine crawlers also being taken care of. You can pretty much be assured that the third base is dead right here and now we may even see some micro from Honey Badger will he pick up the Immortal to keep it alive? No he won't, not just yet the Immortals are uh, absolutely ripping apart those stalkers there uh, oh sorry, the roaches there and Honey Badger is uh, looking very very sexy right now he's got all of these stalkers here catching a couple of those random uh, roaches that are out there force fields are starting to wear a little thin he's still got, uh, he's still got at least I'd say 8 or 9 more but uh, he's just got to be uh, careful not to make sure that he gets caught out here that's, that's one thing that he definitely does not want and there we go Beautiful force fields there from Honey Badger. Count grabs the roaches, doesn't actually keep a hold of them, but does enough damage to them to force them back. And now the destructible rocks have gone down. Tears of dust and brown are, are plenty. And there are some more force fields cutting off a majority of the roaches up to the top. A few down left down to the bottom side. More and more Protoss stalkers are being warped in here from the warp prism. He could probably even bring the warp prism in. GG well played from Rochan. Unfortunately, just not prepared for that attack. Good luck for the next round. And Honey Badger says thank you. Okay. Alright, well, Honey Badger takes down Rochan.